and for no thank you so much for working on it <laughs> all right i'll leave you two at it is this angle good okay. uh right. yeah what do you think about the angle yeah i think it's good yeah so. great well, thanks for making time for us, Jude. You guys are in North Carolina? Um, Austin. Um, Arden is from Ash. Oh, no, she's from um, Raleigh. Oh. Yeah. I went to um, high school in Asheville, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, the... uh, my relatives live in Black Mountain. Oh, yeah? It's beautiful there. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, congrats on the new book. Thank you. Um, we'll talk for about 10 minutes, and this is not live. We'll just take the best parts uh, and edit them down and get it ready to run next week. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, tell me how it um, feels to be ending up this particular trilogy. Um, kind of sad a little bit, but I have invented another town, and I'm... I think four books into it, so <laughs> it's always the next book, right? Or what I'm working on now. Yeah. And so, what? How, tell me about writing standalones versus um, trilogies or, or series. I mean, when you start a series, you, you know that it's going to be a series, right? And and so, what makes you feel like you want to spend that much time with all those characters? <laughs> I like them. I like them. That's the whole thing. How I started uh, with. Uh, using the same characters is because I got so sad when I finished a book and they were all gone and I wouldn't see them again. And I thought, Hey, I'll just carry on into the next one. And I came up with a series with four brothers and I've done that ever since then. I like my keeping track of my people. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so you, you, I've noticed that you have a really, um, you know, really healthy sort of engagement with your readers on social media. And I assume at your events and, in other ways, maybe letters or whatever. Tell me about, um, you know, your sort of obligation to listen to your readers' um, ideas and their suggestions versus just following your own imagination. I mean, do, do you take your readers' ideas when, when they say, well, we want to see what happens to such and such a character, or do you just kind of um, follow your own imagination? I follow my own. They always yeah. say that. They want to know, have books for every single character, and I, I can't do that. Uh, yeah. I will tell them I'm doing so-and-so or I'm planning to do so-and-so, but there are some characters who I didn't like, uh, and I can't do the book, so I don't really follow them. Yeah. And so you um, you have been publishing for a while. I mean, what a – I mean – Maybe this is too broad of a question, but publishing has changed a lot, right? Oh, unbelievable. It's night and day from when I started. Yeah. The uh, politically correct thing is just maddening. Just, it is so frustrating. Don't get started. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It's and so I grew up in um, Amarillo, Texas, and, and I saw that you're, um, you used to be a teacher in Santa Fe. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And so your first book was called The Land of Enchantment. Right. And and was it just sort of having lived there that was the, the setting, the real life setting was the inspiration for the fictional setting or? No, I think it was growing up in front of a television set. <laughs> and I, it's the way I think and I, I still do, still watch a lot of TV. I like it in movies. Uh, but I grew up, um, when I was three years old, my father discovered television a long time ago and we were one of the first people in town to get one. <laughs> oh really never left it yeah, yeah. So that's what it was and so is it like you, you you'll sit there watching a some program on tv and and it actually fuels your own ideas sometimes i watched uh one time uh, a show of uh, one of those unsolved mystery things and this man was saying that his mother got on a train one day and disappeared and no one ever saw her and I said, okay, there's a book and it was a <laughs> sweet liar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the um, 1930s. Right yeah. So tell me about making the uh, ghost in Ever After funny. I, it, you know, obviously we usually think of them as being spooky, but I liked that choice that you made. 
Right. It just seems to me that everybody thinks ghosts are scary. I lived in England, and I had a house that was haunted, and we had two ghosts in it, Miranda and Tom the trickster, who just drove us crazy, but there was nothing malicious about either one of them. Um, and I'd have guests, and they'd wake up, there's this woman in my room. Oh, yeah, that's Miranda. She's watching all everybody. And uh, she helped choose wallpaper, and she did all kinds of things. And Tom, every April Fool's, it was, he just made everybody crazy. With but, so I wanted to write more about what I knew about ghosts, <laughs> rather than what I had read in scary magazine and books. Yeah. And um, when you're starting on a series, do you plot the whole, you know, the, the plot details out, or do you go as you're writing, or? Uh, both. Sometimes characters take over, but I do a lot of plotting beforehand. Uh, for every page in the book, I've got a page somewhere written, uh, plotting and figuring out, and I do a lot of research beforehand. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And how, how, how much... Um, I mean, obviously, if, if you're writing a trilogy or a longer series, as, as we've talked about, you, you have to sort of like the characters and, and want to follow them. But you're, you, you've chosen different historical periods, and, and your research must have been pretty fascinating. I mean, has it ever been the case that you just wanted to know more about a historical period, and so you, you set a book there? Or is it really the characters come first? Um, no, it's a, a historical period that I like. I wanted the time when the castles were the absolute uh, ultimate the top, and that was 1283. And then another one I picked out a year, 1893, because I like the sleeves on the women's clothes at that time. So it'll be something like that. And I love uh, Thomas Jefferson, so <laughs> yeah. And then there's some periods I don't like, like Vikings. <laughs> so I don't do those. Well, you watch TV and there's this great series, um, The Vikings, so you can... Just watch that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so this may be a tough question, but do you have a favorite historical period of all the ones that you've written about? I probably like Elizabethan. I like Elizabethan a lot. Yeah. Uh, early Elizabethan, when she was young and and healthy, and yeah, it's very exciting time. For yeah. Me. And then, you know, a. a, a a book that's set then has to be marketed, I think, a little bit differently from one set, you know, nowadays or in 1893. Do you have to kind of adjust your the way you talk about the books and do the marketing for them based on the historical period? Well, right now, uh, historicals don't sell, so uh, there are no more historicals. I'm not supposed to write them anymore, so I kind of put little time travel in there and do this and that, so I get some historical in there. But, um, just do marketing them, I don't think so, when they were popular. But now, I don't know what you do, but you sell them. People don't want to read them anymore. Right. Nowadays, you write books set in the present. <laughs> yes. Right. You try to be politically correct. Right. <laughs> no thrown woman across a horse, no galloping off into the sunset. Uh, none of that. Can't do that. Right. right. Well, great. Well, thanks so much for making some time to talk to us. And uh, as I said, congrats on the new book. Thank you very much. Okay, have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, Kai. Okay, thanks, Alex. Bye-bye.